All right, folks, we're going to continue with Keynesian economic theory here. And what we're now going to learn about is uh, what's called the Keynesian multiplier. Okay, so Keynesian multiplier. Now, we just finished in the last lesson, uh, we began understanding um, Keynesian economic theory using this, this table of values here. Okay, so we have uh, consumption in the economy, investment in the economy, government spending, uh, and net exports in the economy. And when you add up these four items, of course, we get total expenditure and we said previously, in a way, way back, that total expenditure and income in the economy, they should be equal because they're measuring the same thing. Um, how much is spent in the economy is going to be the same as the income for the people in the economy. And what we identified was that here are, these are a whole bunch of possible situations uh, and that only one of them is really going to occur in the actual economy. And it's going to be the one where income, right here, where income is equal to total expenditure. So what we can say, given this information about the economy, is that this particular economy is going to be at, uh, it's, it says 12400 but if it was the United States, this would be $12.4 trillion, okay, or 12400 billion dollars, okay? Um, and the very last thing we did in the, in the previous lesson was this, is we made a change to government spending. We increased government spending by 100, so that it was 2,800, and that increased all of our total expenditures over here by 100. So this became 12,200, this was 275, 350, 425, 500, et cetera, okay? What wound up happening was this one, this 12,700, that one became 12,800, right? And then when we matched up our new total expenditure calculations over here with income, we found that the new equilibrium G GDP, the equilibrium between income and total expenditure occurred at 12,800. Okay, so now after a 100 billion increase in government spending, our new equilibrium between income and total expenditure went, didn't only go up by 100 billion, it actually went up by 400 billion. Okay, so we went from 12,400 billion up to 12,800 billion because this now matches this total expenditures as 12,800. And then the question came up, well, why did that happen? Why did we have an increase of 400 billion instead of an increase of only 100 billion? And the answer was, well, the increase in government spending triggered a whole bunch of spending in consumption. Because the government spent more money in the economy, that triggered a whole bunch of consumers to then also go out and spend a lot of money. And so even though there was only a $100 billion increase in government spending, there wound up being a, from, from here up to here, okay, consumption went from 7,700 up to 8,000. So that's a 300 uh, increase, 300 billion increase in consumption. And so a 100 billion increase in government spending with a 300 billion increase in consumption gave us a total of a 400 billion increase in, uh, in GDP. And that's because, um, that's because consumption primarily, according to Keynesian economic theory, consumption drives the economy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, we're going to try and understand uh, how can we predict how much GDP will go up by when there is a change in investment or government spending or net exports. And that, uh, to understand that, we're going to go to the Keynesian multiplier. So I'm going to give you a definition for the Keynesian multiplier. The Keynesian multiplier is a ratio that 
that calculates the change in total expenditure. That will result due to changes in consumption when there is an initial change in investment, government spending, or net exports. Okay, so here's, here's the deal. This Keynesian multiplier is basically a mathematical factor. And if you multiply that mathematical factor, that's a, a multiplier, right? Like something you multiply by that mathematically, that's called a factor. So this Keynesian multiplier is a mathematical factor that you multiply by whatever the change is in investment, government spending, and net exports. And when you multiply this Keynesian multiplier by whatever your change is, that'll tell you the overall change in total expenditure. And I'm going to give you the calculation for the Keynesian multiplier. Let's go right over here. I'm going to do it in a different color. Let's do it in purple. The Keynesian multiplier, I'll put it right here. Keynesian multiplier, Km is equal to 1 over 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. And so, let me put a box around, put this in a box. The Keynesian multiplier is 1 divided by 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume. So over here, for this particular circumstance, the Keynesian multiplier is going to be, um, for this circumstance, the marginal propensity to consume is 0.75. And if you, uh, if you don't remember how to do the marginal propensity to consume, you can go back to the video on the marginal propensity to consume, but I will show you how we came up with a 0.75 here. Basically what we did was we went to consumption and we went to income. Remember that the marginal propensity to consume is the, it's the, the ratio of the change in consumption divided by the change in income. So here, consumption goes from 7,400 up to 7,475, so that's an increase of 75. Income goes from 12,000 up to 12,100. That's an increase of 100. So 75 divided by 100 equals 0.75. And that's how we know that the marginal propensity to consume is 0.75. And you should be able to calculate that. You should know how to do that. All right, so, what, so now to calculate the Keynesian multiplier for this economy, we're going to do, we're going to say that the Keynesian multiplier is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus the marginal propensity to consume, which is 0.75. So we have 1 divided by, and 1 minus 0.75, that's 0.25, and 1 divided by 0.25 is 4, and therefore the Keynesian multiplier for this economy is 4. So now what that means is this. If you were to increase government spending by 100, you could then multiply that 100 by 4, and that'll tell you the overall effect on, uh, on uh, total expenditure. On equal, another way of saying it is it's the overall effect on the new equilibrium GDP. Okay, um, so let's so let's go back to the example that we did in the previous lesson, and what we did was I'm going to use red for this one. Okay, is we increased government spending by 100. So all of these numbers all the way down are going to become 2,800, right? 2,800, 2,800, 2,800, 2,800, 2,800, okay, all the way down, okay? All 2,800. So government spending has gone up by 100, okay? 
And now when we add up consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports, we get total expenditure, but this number is going to go up by 100 because government spending has gone up by 100. So this is now going to be 12,200. This one will be 12,275, 12,350, 12,425, 12,500, 12,575, 12,650, 12,725, 12,800, 12,875, 12,950, and then 13,025. And what we said was this, is now we want to find where the equilibrium is between income and total expenditure. And it's on this line right here, 12,800 all the way over to 12,800, okay? That's our, that's our equilibrium. And so this is our new, and I know this is like the second time we've already said this in the last like five minutes, but I, ne I need to clarify. We were asking the question, how could we know that GDP was gonna go up by 400? How could we predict that GDP would go from 12,400 up to 12,800? Well, here's the answer. You're gonna take the Keynesian multiplier, which is four, and multiply it by the increase in 100. Because government spending increased by 100, 100 times four is 400, and that tells you the overall increase in uh, GDP. All right, so here's a problem for you. It says a uh, real GDP in the economy is 15,800 billion and the marginal propensity to consume is 0.8. It says what will real GDP be, what will real GDP be after a 50 billion dollar increase in investment. Now you may be thinking, "Oh man, I'm going to have to create this whole this whole chart." And my answer to you is no, you don't. You don't have to create this whole chart. That's um, that would be, um, I mean, you could probably create the chart, but you don't have to because you have, you know how to use the Keynesian multiplier. And so let's go ahead and identify the Keynesian multiplier here. Uh, so the Keynesian multiplier is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus whatever the marginal propensity to consume is, which in this case is 0.8. And 1, uh, 1 minus 0 0.8 is 0 0.2, so we have 1 divided by 0 0.2, and 1 divided by 0 0.2 is 5. So in this economy, the Keynesian multiplier is 5, and now all we have to do is multiply the 5 times the $50 billion increase, and so $50 billion times 5 is equal to $250 billion. And now what we have to do is we have to add the $250 billion to the starting real GDP. So it's going to be uh, 15800 plus $250 billion, And that's going to be 16050 And that's going to be in billions. And so the, new, the answer to this question is, what will real GDP be after the 50 billion increase, it's going to be $16,050 billion. This is the same thing as saying $16.05 trillion. Okay? Um, and so that is one of the ways that you can use the Keynesian multiplier to know how there's going to be a change in the economy.